Hello everyone and welcome back to Yosemite Valley. Welcome to this wonderful Saturday and today we are going to do the Timberwolf Habitat that basically most of you guys have waited for. You will see now a few minutes of uh, fixing a little bit of the Grizzly Bear Habitat before we then jump into the actual Timberwolf Habitat. I added some timestamps for you guys so in case you don't want to see this rest uh, of the other stuff and the waterfall you can jump right into where the Timberwolf Habitat starts. But here um, we're gonna talk about a little bit more why I did this and why I actually was super happy that you guys voted for it. Um, this was actually my favorite, but I am, um, well, not really. The Elephant House potentially has been a little bit uh, prioritized by myself, but I did, you know, I did know that you guys won't go for this. So I, it was totally the right decision to go with the Timberwolves. But I gotta say um, that this habitat turned out to be one of my favorites. And yeah, I, I say, I, I know I say that quite often, but. Um, I, I think it is also because of the learning curve of this game that, you know, after a certain uh, moment in time where you have a certain feeling for the overall situation, it kind of starts to come together in a, in a lot better way and therefore you start creating better and better habitats after each other and not as in the beginning where, you know, there was a bit more testing and stuff going on. So I'm a lot, a lot more confident in my builds now and I think this is really translated into today's build. This is going to be a very realistic, uh, natural Timberwolf habitat, something that you could really see in a in a zoo, like, you know, um, I don't, I, it could be Paddy Dizer, and um, simply because in today's quality episode, we, we talk a lot about the zoo, but also like in, in natural zoos, um, Burger Zoo or stuff like that, you know, they, which look a little bit more um, towards really realistic natural habitats. And especially here in Yosemite, we uh, obviously look at making it almost like if this was a habitat of the nature and potentially is even connected to the actual nature rather than being, you know, a zoo habitat. So I laid it out in a way that potentially you could imagine that the animals can go back into the wild and um, are only here for, you know, playing and, you know, just being a little bit close to the riverside. But in, in general, like in, in theory, they could go back into the wild. Um, the same as with the grizzly bears and with the bison habitat, that these habitats are mostly not part of the zoo, but just like a natural um, viewing point for the guests in the zoo. Now, I really do hope that you guys like this, because I have to say um, that this was really a lot of fun to build and really a lot of... Uh, time that I put into it and um, yeah I, I made some nights longer than they needed to be but I just needed to finish that because I was so happy with how it turned out especially also this waterfall over here turned out to be great. This is still um, a part of the last live stream so for those of you who have been in the live stream they do know this already but uh, I did do improve this waterfall quite significantly afterwards as well. I did a lot of work around there with like nature and, and try to fill in some gaps and you know also integrated a little bit of moss here and there and just make it overall a little bit more realistic and you know one of the things that in Planet Zoo um, that is really important and also quite difficult to be honest is um, making huge waterfalls look somewhat realistic simply because the way how the VFX effects work you can see zooming out um, a little bit too far makes this uh, waterfall disappear which performance wise is absolutely great and I'm not even this is not even complaining this is just like kind of uh, seeing this as a fact and I, I totally think that this is the best way of doing it because otherwise the performance would just go nuts and I'm really surprised by how less of an effect this has towards my performance. I think it is well optimized um, with the VFX effects over here because there are as you can see million millions and millions of these effects are basically put into that corner and uh, it's it seems to work out just well which uh, I'm, I'm super uh, happy about because that leads towards the fact that I can still go on with the zoo and do whatever I want to do and just make it look a bit nicer and more detailed but you can see this is already starting to change a little bit of the landscaping around and oh my god it's just so crazy how quickly this turns out but you guys have to tell me in the comments what is your favorite part about the zoo so far nature wise do you like this waterfall or do you like for example the half dome we've built on the other side which is uh, you know also reminiscent of Yosemite or do you like the natural um, flowing mountainside here for the grizzly bears or what is your favorite natural part of the zoo I would be really interested to know that so let me know in the comments down below 
uh, what is your favorite uh, natural part of the zoo so far. And yeah, I'm, I'm still planning a few more things in here that hopefully will turn out to be great, like a bit more on a larger scale as well. But you know, as, as you know, this is always a bit tricky uh, to make it look good and also to, well, I, I would love to say keep the piece count at a minimum, but you know, that would be the biggest lie I've ever said. So no, it's not. But yeah, finally, we start with the Timberwolf habitat. And this Timberwolf habitat is something special, as I already said at the beginning. Now, the reason why is I am com combining a lot of things. So first of all, I'm combining a new kind of architectural style um, that I found about Yosemite. It's not like entirely new, but it's a, um, I, I would say it is kind of a, um, continuation of the entrance building and just paired with a little bit of a different style i will also uh, bring in a bit more of a you know larger scale habitat um, area with viewing points and stuff i will also go into a lot more rock work like detailed rock work than i have been doing recently and i will also uh, bring in a nice little viewing gallery and also this is insane but uh, also like a tunnel that leads into the habitat quite realistically with the backstage area connected you will see this a lot better in the real-time part then don't worry about this this is one of the most important things today um, i could not give you this episode without the real-time part because there is just too much about this habitat to discover which you cannot see that much in um, the final result and um, screenshots or whatever. But yeah, I can only say that I'm super happy and the wolves can can use most of the habitat just as I was planning it to be. Um, at the end, this habitat will not be like 110% finished. It's, it's just like mostly finished and I need to um, do a little bit of the... Uh, habitat uh, borders on the other side of the river but i decided to not do this now uh, i just put some fences in with climb uh, climbing proof uh, you know um, fence elements and just to make sure that they cannot escape for the moment because i want to make sure that these natural borders are really natural and so to say i do them whenever we get there okay so the borders are on the other side of this uh this river and I want uh, the animal to be able to swim in the river as I said I want to make it as much as possible realistic as if they were roaming around um, and I didn't want to throw like a million rocks again into the water to make sure they cannot swim past so what I will do is I will do some natural borders on the other side and once I've done this I will then check uh, what needs to be done to make sure that they cannot escape there however this is now very special now this is a centerpiece of this habitat not only because of where it is located, but also how much detail I put on it. Now, the idea about this habitat and how in general habitats are made, you have certain things that draw the attention from the guests that are um, like highly detailed and really, you know, me maybe even thematic. And then you have a whole bunch of stuff in the habitat, which is just natural and so on and so forth. And still the habitat looks absolutely gorgeous because the focus goes always on these very highly detailed things in the habitat, whether for monkeys or for apes, it's definitely the, the climbing frames or kind of you have some, some zoos even have like a sunken ship or whatever for, for sharks, for example. Um, or then you have, I don't know, for the lions, you have this very detailed lion uh, rock or whatever and then the rest of the habitat is mostly nature and uh, concrete or whatever um, and this is the same idea about this rock over here this should be the wolf rock where the wolves can just climb on lay on top there will be some enrichment items going on uh, it's just a focus point for the people to look at and where hopefully some of the wolves will just be uh, chilling and enjoying their time so that they they can look at this and obviously the rock itself also provides some privacy because in the back there is not that much space provided for them. Now talking of that, there is also going to be a lot of uh, plants and trees in this habitat so it makes it all look a bit more lush but I was I was constantly changing the foliage just to make sure to you know maintain the sidelines because I wanted to make the waterfall peek through at some of these areas. Now it, it was a bit hard because um, I tend to do less um, foliage than what would be realistic. So I, I could even go more crazy. Sometimes I'm just not brave enough to put down more foliage, and uh, just because I want to maintain some of the some of the uh, areas um, to to be visible. And I I don't know. Maybe it is just because I have always like the the visibility of the habitats in mind. But realistically, I would need to use even more foliage, especially ground 
growing uh, bushes and stuff. So I really want to try to make this more often in the future. I'm not sure if I will deliver on that, but yeah. You can see also this time lapse, and now I, I, I'm pretty sure that you will see this now, is a bit more sped up than usually because it is already freaking long and uh, it is mostly rock work and very stable so i hope it's not making you too dizzy but i i find it actually very satisfying right now to see all these rocks being placed and trust me they are not randomly placed i really try to look a bit more into it this time you can see i'm constantly changing the camera to get a view of how it looks from different angles you can see that i wanted to make sure that the structure goes in the texture goes in and it's not like overdone and at the same time it transitions nicely into the texture alone and you can see i'm hiding some of the pieces already in some enrichment items here and there to make sure that they go there later and yeah in the real time part you will also see the ro wolves already in the habitat at least some i will put some more in i just had some for testing um and you will have a look but now we jump over to the next major part and this is now the detailing of the area now the, the, the nature and the overall habitat is mostly done and now we have to make sure that we have the guest viewing over here. And I wanted to go with something more classical this time. Like I had already quite a few things that were very rustic, very Yosemite-ish and, you know, not, not very classical zoo-ish, you know. And this is the first little thing which is really a bit more inspired by actual zoo architecture and how a zoo would do stuff like that. So we have this um, like very bright yellow-ish, yellow-white-ish, I should say, um, it's almost ivy color, to be honest, but anyways. Um, this is, uh, no, it's not ivy, it is, what is that again? Uh, elvery, that's what that's what it is. Um, colored uh, concrete, and it's really uh, ivory. Ivory is the one, not elvery, ivory, oh my god. I was just completely confusing things. It is the ivory color, and um, it really was a little bit of a struggle because I wanted to make it look a bit more classical, as I said. And, you know, this concrete, very bright, is a bit more reminiscent of maybe even like, you know, England, uh, 18th century classical garden style. I don't know if this is what I wanted to go for. And then pair it with a bit more timber to make sure that this looks, uh, you know, just a bit more fitting to Yosemite because originally I would have needed then a stone railing uh, on top instead of the wooden uh, brownish one. But I decided to go with the, uh, you know, with the brown one to just make it a bit more fitting to Yosemite. And I don't know, I just, I think it looks really decent. I really think it looks decent, especially with the, um, broken broken stone texture path I think that looks really decent and fits very well together and you can see that I was trying also to get in with a small detail of again the drainage um, that where the water can go down it's just this little grayish stripe there but the idea was that this is kind of a little little thing where the water can go down and so that you don't have the water standing over there and running down onto the path because obviously since the concrete is a little bit raised up to the left and right there would a be a potential of standing water and especially because there is a little bit of an incline here that you create a very like unfortunate little small river going down the pathway and you just don't want that so this is why I have this little detail and then yeah I did a cut here because I, it took me quite a while to realize where I wanted to put the entrance to the habitat now the biggest issue about the entrance was that I couldn't put this to the central piece where this pathway is leading to by the way this will be an awesome building you've seen that on the thumbnail um, I really spent a lot of time researching which building I want to have there and I originally wanted to have the entrance to the habitat for the keepers on there as well but then I figured that this doesn't work necessarily mainly because um, how the game works with the habitats I could not make like a roundish habitat around this central point so I needed to have this still at the side of the habitat and then I decided to go right below this bridge over here and yeah it just ended up looking expect uh, you know unexpectedly good because it is hidden down there and I just needed to make sure that this quite ugly backstage path which we will somewhere in the future will make this look nice but at the moment I was just about like hiding it away with like here you know, these kind of mural fences and making making sure that this is somewhat covered by nature so from the guest perspective it's almost or completely hidden already but I just wanted to make sure that um, there is the entrance like for the game so I could put the animals in and just be happy uh, with this it, yeah I know it's it's kind of unnecessarily detailed and unnecessarily kind of 
you know, hidden already, but I just wanted to have it for the moment and we will do some more stuff about this in the future. Now, then I figured, okay, um, I don't want to have only the building on the central part here. I just want also to have a little bit of a balcony, like a viewing platform where the people can go and just enjoy. They can not only look at that, but also at the waterfall. And then I figured I still have this chapel from my Christmas special, which no one in this world has seen, which is still funny. I think it is still quite no views at all. <laughs> it almost feels like. Um, and this building is just like one by one Yosemite. This is based on a very famous little chapel in Yosemite Valley. And so I basically um, rebuilt this for a Christmas special. And yeah, now it found its way back uh, its way back into this build and I, I'm not sure if I leave it at this location Maybe you guys can help me and tell me if you like the location where it is in now You will see this a little bit better in the real-time part uh, later on But yeah, I'm, I'm just a little bit unsure if I want to keep it there or not Another question before we go into this very finicky little build over here um, I recently have the issue that my computer is setting my microphone always to um, a 100% input which is really weird because the level usually is set to 80% but whenever I restart my computer it is automatically at 100% input again which is yeah it, it causes oversteer it causes really weird stuff and I haven't found a way to apply that like the only option I have is whenever I change it I can click OK but in the past there was always an option to apply things and then keep it for the future but for me it seems it's gone so any one of you out there has an idea how to fix that is there a way now in Windows 10 how I have to do it I'm a little bit confused and I just remember that because when I was starting this build I just did a little recording prior and I couldn't use it because the voice was like so oversteery again and this is why I reminded this now um, looking at that but you can really see I wanted to create a building that you can also find in Yosemite Valley it is one of uh, one of the more famous builds when you look for Yosemite sheds or Yosemite cabins. Um, and it is like having this very, very big stone uh, fooders, so to say. And then it uh, kind of transitions into a wooden timber build on top. And I thought this was really cool. And I wanted to build this in here as well and just using some of the rocks. I I will use also a lot more of the normal in-game rocks later on, but I think it really turned out looking decent. I mean, sure, you can do it even better with a lot of different uh, pieces and, you know, just making the, the colors a little bit more um, blending into each other. But I, I wanted to have these kind of colorful options to make sure that this is a more or less fictional build and not a natural one. We have a lot of natural stuff already in Yosemite, but I wanted to make this one um, seem to be man-made fictional for the zoo. So this is really, as I said, it is a combination out of a natural habitat, so where the animals live, but how the zoo has approached this is very zoo-ish and already at a later stage of Yosemite Valley Zoo, where they really went a little bit more into theming. And also part of the reason, and I really hope you guys like it, let me know in the comments down below if you do like it, because this is a really important decision. I really thought that maybe it's time now for Yosemite Valley to um, step a little bit further forward to still keep the um, realistic approach of the zoo, obviously, but now um, open the door a bit more for theming so that we really now say, okay, it is time now uh, to open up for actual zoo-themed uh, habitats. The reason why I think about this is mainly because the African area and then also a bit more Asian area or whatever is coming next um, has to be a bit more themed. And I don't want to go completely into the Yosemite Valley theme all the time because I feel this is also getting boring. And so I really want to make sure that I can do a bit of theming. Everything needs to fit in, don't worry. It will also be still very muted in colors and stuff like that. So there is still my inner drive to keep it to Yosemite. But do you like this idea to, to be a bit more into theming now for the future? Making sure that this zoo gets a lot more theming towards the African area, which is up next. And uh, yeah, just let me know in the comments down below. And if if so, you can also provide me with some links of your favorite themed zoos, um, in case you know some. Uh, what is your most favorite themed area in your local zoo, for example? Send me some pictures. Also, if you want to join my Discord, there are plenty of threads where you can throw in the images and it always is a big help if you want um, and while we're talking about these little plugs here 
uh, in case you're interested in what I'm doing in my everyday life as well and um, more bit more personal, I would highly recommend to check out the links in the description to my social media channels because on Twitter and on Instagram I put a lot more stuff that is not always related to Planet Zoo or games. So in case you are interested in that, I do recommend this because I get some questions sometimes where I'm thinking like, you know, this is an easy question. You can get an easy answer just looking at, at these channels and that's it. Anyways, let's talk a little bit more about this build because it's getting a bit more exciting now as we approach the end of the time lapse. Well, it's still a minute or two left, but um, yeah. So as I said, this building was inspired by one of the more famous cabins in Yosemite Valley. I really think it looks decent enough um, to say that this is one of the coolest builds in this whole zoo so far because it also is located so prominently in the central area here. Um, I went also with a different uh, fence design here because I just loved the way how the texture on this worked and yeah even though it was a bit too bright for me in the get-go I figured together with this brownish piece it really fits in well and it really rounds off this area and yeah just I just continued on doing these little uh, details here. I just didn't want to overdo it. I just wanted to left, uh, leave this uh, balcony as, you know, as simple and clean as possible, just to make sure that it, you know, has some room to breathe and people kind of create the final picture when they are on this and view the animals. I really do hope that we get some, you know, visa points and stuff in the future but i think it's not that big of an issue for this specific habitat because the animals will roam around a lot in there and so people will definitely go to this um yeah viewing point over there without even putting uh, a kind of visa point there but yeah so we are as i said getting towards the end it's now spamming a lot more foliage in there to make this look a bit more natural but you can see from the placement this time i really went in to make it a bit more meaningful and nice looking rather than just throwing them down but uh, yeah, you will you will see this now in the real time part and uh, just a few last rocks here and there. And then we see each other in the real time part on the other side of the cut as always. All right, so here we are in the real time part. And as you can see, this is how this overall habitat looks now. Let me just change the time of day a little bit so to put it even more in the sun. There you go. And you can see um, I did a little bit of a fake fencing here. Uh, this is just to make sure that this looks uh, nice as it can be. But just look at the area. I'm, I'm really pleased by how it came together. If you consider now this to be more or less like the finish area. By the way, this is uh, how the waterfall does disappear in the back. Let me just zoom a bit more in. In. so we have it again there you go now we can zoom out a bit more it doesn't matter but uh, you know when you go far away once it's kind of gone but yeah there are so many cool viewpoints here I had in mind and they just all work together so when you approach this area it's basically completely hidden for you it's really this this kind of we will need to put something here which uh, drags the attention but as you as you approach the first thing that appears to you is this building on the left hand side but you can hear already I mean you can't but in real life you would be able to hear the waterfall so this is really also dragging your attention and then boom you can see it here to the left hand side you automatically start to rotate around and then you have this wonderful vista over here you can see that oh there's a balcony I can I can see something and while you go there you will be you will be welcomed by this wonderful rock over here to the left hand side um, how it's partly in the Sun there's one wolf on top here look at that it's already in, oh look at this is exactly what I meant this is just like so beautiful you know they're just chilling on top of this uh, rock here um, almost hidden you know you cannot really see that it's really something to discover oh my god look at that this looks just gorgeous let me just quickly is there someone around here i can use as tagit cam not really right now but anyways um this looks just fantastic i guess because this really is what you need there can you see there's another one in the background coming around as soon as we fit in more of these animals here this will be even more interesting to uh, discover yeah on the right hand side again this area is not done yet it will appear to be great as soon as this is all nice and tightly done but uh, yeah you can already see how the rocks down here work well together and if we if we approach this building um it's, as I said, not 100% not done. Oh, look at that. They can see also one of the wolves going a bit more higher up there. Uh, you have this wonderful viewing point over here, which is a bit more to the nature. If you want to look towards the rock on the left-hand side, you have a bit more of uh, a glimpse towards this uh, 
nice cozy area for the wolves here and to the right hand side you have a peek through to the waterfall if you want there's another wolf in the shade and then you can go into this building this is where i plan to put all the education about the timber wolves it's not done from the inside i will i will do this um it's not looking good obviously but yeah this will be all f you know made nicely looked uh, looking for it with some timber and stuff in here to make sure that this looks good and then we will do some education boards also make sure that the ground doesn't look as ugly as it does right now but yeah you can then go outside and you have this incredible viewing area here for the waterfall look at that the mist on the ground the wolf is running just in front of it uh, this is just incredible and as soon as this backside is also seamed and and done and this phase is done even better this will be looking awesome i i plan to put some more trees up here um i got the idea to maybe sink them into the ground a bit more to make them appear smaller than they are to make this appear higher than it is um, and then to the right hand side, I don't know what exactly we do, but this could also be like a little building that goes here, a storage building or whatever. And this is the second entrance area of the zoo. I potentially will lower this all down and then just kind of make a highway going to here. But yeah, we will see. You can see some of the wolves now swimming in the river. And as you go here, and this was another wonderful thing I wanted to have, and now let me just change the time again. It's always a little bit of a matter of a time of day thing, but look at look at this peak. This is again one of these things I wanted to maintain. You feel really like being in a nature reserve, and then you have this incredible view here to the half dome, and even if the zoo is done later on, you will have no issue at all because this thing is a little bit raised here. There's a whole big gap in between, so even if we do like a whole dome here or whatever, um, you won't you won't have this in your uh, sidelines. It will still be the wonderful sideline towards Yosemite Dome uh, or Half Dome. And I see that I have to do a bit of the backside here. Just just maybe a bit more grayish, but that's about it. Um, and yeah, this this one over here will also be re-themed and uh, done a bit more nice uh, and, and kind of mountain-ish. I'm not even sure how I exactly do it. I, I will definitely lower it a little bit and then I will put a lot more foliage on top of it and then make some of the some of the rock faces peek through a bit more like reminiscent of what I've done to this side here, which you cannot see right now. But yeah, so this is really cool, I guess. And in general, I'm, I'm super happy with how it turned out. Now let me just change back the time of day so that we do have this all in bright sunlight. You can see the theming about this building on this little shed is not crazily overdone, but I think it really fits in. Again, as I said, this is completely artificial. It's not a real building, so it's it's kind of a fake window here, obviously. Um, you know, there's no reason why we would have a window, but I think it just looks better. But yeah, there will be some benches in, some maybe ATM or whatever. So I think that looks nice. And yeah, when we go out again, you have this other view here, but but there's just one more thing I wanted to show you um, and this is like this view over here with the, the chapel in the back and the half dome we already talked about to the right hand side you see peak of the grizzly building and then if we approach the left hand side towards the bridge you have this incredible view of this viewing platform and the waterfall next to it just in case you come from this side of the zoo you know that might potentially also be possible uh, you are greeted with this incredible view here I mean just look at that on the left hand side you have the the whole um, who was that again El Capitan ish style thing and then you have the waterfall and yeah I think it really starts to come together now it really starts to be exactly what I wanted to have like these these two mountain things and that one are the only ones that still are a pain in my eye I do need to redo but the rest is almost like exactly what I wanted it to be so yeah we will see where this leads us in the future but I'm really ho hoping that you guys enjoyed today's episode in case you did and I'm just going to place the camera now to this incredible view over here I don't know if you will like it or not but I do like it so I'm gonna gonna keep that here I really hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of the Timberwolf Habitat and uh, please let me know in the comments down below what you think of this build, what's your favorite part of this, is it the waterfall, is it the central viewing platform, do you like the bridge, do you like um, this little uh, beautiful nature rock where the animals can chill on, or what do you like most about this habitat and I really do hope you like Yosemite in case you haven't seen the whole project there is the playlist as always available for you in the description or also as a little info bubble somewhere in the video. And again, as a little reminder, if you want to join the conversation about this project, join my Discord channel. Many people are in there as well already, and you can also bring in your ideas. And in case you want to see some sneak peeks and stuff, membership options, blah blah. I need to. I don't need to remember you all of the time. It's it's available. You see that in case, but whatever. 
yeah, while this wolf is now starting, I guess, to play with this wonderful little uh, card box, <laughs> uh, we are about to end today's episode, and I really do hope you guys enjoyed. Until then, have a very good time, stay safe, everyone, and goodbye.